I have with me Al Edwards. He's a data center manager for the Americas region at Nokia. Al, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Al, uh, I wanted to talk about uh, dealing with data center outages today. Um, let's imagine the following scenario. It's 2 a.m. on a Saturday morning. You're in bed, asleep, and you get a notification that the data center you're managing is down. What are your next steps? Well, one of the big problems in, in data center management that you have, obviously, if you don't have a 7 by 24 operation, is you're half asleep when you get that type of a call. So getting available quickly is one of the bigger challenges that you, you have to deal with. Um, I think that getting up, getting ready, getting focused is your, your key objective, especially if you're the data center manager. Uh, if your support staff is getting out of the house and, and getting into that data center as fast as you possibly can according to the protocol. And then as far as uh, calls that you need to make, uh, who do you call? What, what, if you're the data center manager, what, what do you need to do? Well, most certainly, depending on the severity of the outage, if you're talking about a complete lights out scenario, you have to have an escalation plan. Internal communication is almost as important as external communication. And in some organizations, it has to come before any external uh, communication happens. So most certainly having a very, very clear plan on who you communicate with and when is key. Uh, what are the most effective strategies from your experience for notification of all those that must be notified in case of an outage? Well, unfortunately, it's still the telephone. I, I mean, there's nothing better than getting a call from somebody who's live. Uh, people tend not to pay attention to email anymore. Uh, it's kind of like car alarms, where you get flooded with emails on your BlackBerry type device or what have you, um, and it just it, it completely goes out one ear and into mm -hmm. the other, and you're, and you're finished. So, so you kind of have a, a, a list of yeah. people that you need to call. Yeah, your escalation in, in matrix this. is absolutely key. Mm -hmm. What are the biggest challenges in the process of dealing with, uh, with an outage? And what are the best ways of going about overcoming those challenges? Um, a lot of it is panic. Uh, I, I mentioned in my speech earlier that panic is the number one thing that gets people dislodged uh, and not focused on the problem at hand, most certainly. Uh, I, I mentioned a story about a uh, a friend of mine who was flying her airplane and uh, had an oil pressure reading go to zero and panicked and literally forgot to fly the aircraft for about five minutes uh, and it almost killed her. So, you know, panic, I think number one is the thing you have to get a, a hold of. Everybody does it. I did it uh, during my most recent outage, uh, but that was in private in the car on the way over to the data center, but it's something you have to work through most definitely. What are some of the most common mistakes that people make during data center outages in your experience? Throwing the checklists out. Uh, the, the checklists and standard operating procedures are there for a reason. Uh, and hopefully that someone who's working in a mission critical field actually has SOPs and checklists and things like that. But a lot of people feel that you just take those checklists and you throw them out because this, this is a situation that doesn't deserve a checklist, so to speak. But checklists can make your uh, method to uh, rectifying the problem a lot quicker and a lot more disciplined because maintaining discipline in your procedures during a crisis is absolutely key to having a successful crisis management scenario. And you're talking about checklist for a specific outage scenario? Well, not even a specific outage scenario. Your checklist that you go, you go back to is just checklists for restoring systems, checklists for getting back into steady state operations and, th and things like that, stuff that you do every day. So utilize the tools that you have that you use every day and scale them up, so to speak, in your head in order to deal with your crisis situation. So wh why do you think people are so compelled to uh, throw out the checklist in an emergency? Uh, you know, I, I think it's part of the panic side, you know, is that they feel that checklists and procedure introduces time. But the reason why they're actually there is to introduce accuracy and repeatability. And you absolutely want accuracy and repeatability when you've had a crisis because you don't want to turn the crisis into a disaster and then into a catastrophe because you, you winged it. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important not to wing it. Al, thank you very much. Thank you.